Right, come on then. Maui has one that ties into this because it's about who? Yeah. It's a, uh, yeah, spirit themselves. I mean, I feel like the way that they lost this, sure, they lose to Mongols and G2, and maybe in some ways on paper, it, it actually kind of makes sense. You know, GT, G2 seems to be trending upwards, uh, even with the qualms that we have uh, about them and the roster construction. They do seem to, like, they're they're packing a big punch right now, and they actually are a really solid team. But losing to the Mongols, um, not the way that you would expect them to. And really, I think what, well, what I'm keying into here, if people didn't really watch this interview, it's the fact that in the pregame interview between G2 and Spirit, James Banks interviewed Zontix about the mentality of the team and he had some of the most depressing body language and answers that I had ever seen from a tier one pro w going so far as saying that when, when, uh, when James Banks asked, okay, so you guys played G2 before this was at EWC and what are you going to learn from it? And he kind of just shook his head and just, sh just like shrugged his shoulders and said, I don't know. It was kind of like, what, what, what you, you didn't learn anything from that loss before. And uh, they, they didn't, he didn't know why they really lost against, well, he said that the reason they lost against Mongols is that they were kind of playing default, the default wasn't working on Ancient, and then they just kind of gave up on Anubis. They just, they just feel like they weren't playing their game. And it's like, what are you talking about? Like, that was one of, it, it, like, that felt like a mentality thing. And I feel like we've given a lot of praise to, say, Chopper before as a leader when Spirit was on top, but it does feel very strange that they could fall off this badly because of mentality, as if there's no strats that they can just call out of spawn, because, yeah, if they're just losing the default over and over again, you think you would probably just switch it up. Like, if your players are losing your default over and over again, you usually just call a set piece to try to just get them back on track. At least that's that's how I feel like a lot of teams like to run their, their T-sides, and they just kind of just kept running themselves into the ground, just grinding themselves out, and losing losing fights over and over again. And I, I just feel like Spirit is still a team that I would put as one of the top three favorites to win practically any tournament that they enter. But I almost feel like the way Zontix talked in that interview, it felt like you could take it a couple different ways. One is they they feel like they're going to change their roster soon and they felt like they were a dead team. Or two, they just simply had no leadership qualities or emotional emotional uh, capacity in that game to carry on, which which either way, that's that just is disastrous for a team that many of us were billing to be potentially the team of the year. But now they're kind of slowly losing grip on that, that hold. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think, yeah, for me, I didn't see the Mongols game. I saw the game against G2. And I think, uh, for me, it felt like when Donkey and the Shiro didn't, like, yeah, find the openings, they didn't find a groove in the game. And when that happened, I felt like the decision-making from the other players, like, they started to go for info peaks, pushes, like, bad pushes, I would say. And then you put Shiro and Donkey in even bad, more bad positions. And I think, like, uh, on Mirage, uh, I think Yoshiro had a really unlucky game. Like, when he had the AWP, they were not going on his side. And uh, on the other side, they were losing a lot of entries, so he's coming in at a bad spot. And I think Donk had a hard time in mid as well. But it was just like, when what happens when Donk and Shiro is not on the, at the top of the game? Do they have this, like, structure and system and, uh, like, a team-based game that they can rely on to grind yourself back into the game uh and for me that's a worrying sign when i look at them yeah there's a few angles i can go on this so first of all i'll just do the lower bracket match because here's the thing the upper bracket match like i say i think it was like a miracle game that's like a once a lifetime game for the mongols okay yes not great for spirit but you can get shocked by smaller teams. The lower bracket one against G2 was so bizarre because I watched this whole game. I did a live view of it. The nuke game is nuts because everyone's deleted this from their brain. That starts with Spirit on T side. And I'm telling you, they don't even have like a bad T side. They just can't get any rounds. What happens is like early on, they have a couple of times, by the way, where like Nico and fucking Hunter just kill them completely. There's one round, by the way, where like Nico with a fucking MP9 and a flash like set play just kills like three and a half people or something outside, including Donk instantly with a headshot. Like then Hunter at the door, I swear, wins like three rounds at one point in time with like two Ks or something like stuff that like 
if that even happens once or twice, you go, hey, good game, Hunter. Like, that was like the game of his life, basically. So that one, by the way, their T-side was actually fine. They even had Chopper in 1v1 that he lost. So that one's not even the end of the world. That was more like, you know, okay, not great. But that started the snowball. The Mirage one is just bizarre. Because on in that game, Donk just gets fragged. Like, you would never believe it was Donk if you had the nameplate off. He just gets fragged like a normal player in the first duel. Shiro does nothing the whole game. And then I actually agree with Jumpy. I'm glad he brought it up. What then happens is, because Zontix was having a similar simultaneously mega low fragging that makes me scared he's the guy getting kicked by the way from the way he played overall like his whole body like and the way he played but the worst thing is magics and chopper in a sense did what you should do if you're totally losing the game which is that, like you say they just tried to make a bunch of peaks and players right now sadly because they literally have to use mp9s and gods like that guys they're doing stuff like peaking from like the fucking tetris area into like fucking ramp on Mirage with an MP9 against AKs and Orps. It's like, you can imagine if you're Chopper and Magics, you don't win those duels even with the AK on the M4. You know what I mean? Like, so it was really bad, that situation. But on top, but they were doing it. And then here's the other thing. It was also the perfect storm because I don't actually think G2's T side's that good. And believe it or not, by just not ever committing to a site, Jumpy, G2 just sat there outside the sites and just got free kills all day long. Like, I've never seen a team never go into a bomb site. They didn't even go in the B site. People would just peek into them and give them free kills. And they must have just been thinking, this is like Christmas or something. It's insane. Like, we don't even actually have to have a T side. We're just getting, we're winning the game off yeah. them just peeking into us. So that game was just like some. That, I've never seen Spirit ever play close to that. Even if people think of past losses, like when they lost to Mouse at that RMR, that was just a normal game they lost, and Mouse is really good. This was a game where like half of it was them just beating themselves. Some of it was like in game 100, etc. But uh, no, that was just brutal to me. And then I also do agree, the problem you have is... Spirit uh, in Donk and Shiro are so consistently good. We never get to see these games where the others have to win a game and the others can't. I'm sorry, Chopper and Magics together, they are very, very poor in terms of combat skills. I actually do think, by the way, Magics does his job. By the way, he plays half of the rounds without a fucking proper rifle, guys. Like, he really, that's not a meme, he does. He clearly buy, he clearly drops the AWP and drops the rifle all day, which he should do, but it means in these games he can't do it. He's not going to farm people in that sense. Then I've got the whole thing of like, um, if you actually just, like, there's a rumour people have been saying, like, maybe there's going to be a play change. That would suddenly make so much sense. Because this, because the, because the problem is people are too used to the story of when a team's dead and then they do one last hurrah. That's when things go well early. Also, if they go bad early, you just go, well, we're done anyway. See you, see you, see you, fuck you, fuck you. Yeah, I'll see you three later. You know, it's like that. Like, sometimes you do when you mind check out. Because there's another thing they said in an interview, which is whack. Which is apparently one of them said something like, yeah, we don't really have, like, we don't really have good looking Cologne or we don't like it here. Like, bro, one of the top four tournaments of the year, every year takes place here. Like, that that excuse, put that in the bin. That's a shit excuse. Whatever it might be, maybe you have, maybe. Maybe people are horrible to you because you're Russian. I don't fucking know. But whatever it is, you've got to get over that. Like, if you want to be a top CS team and win, you've just got to be able to play everywhere. By the way, you're going to have to be able to play when you go to Rio. I mean, they're not going to that one, I think. But if you go to like a tournament like Rio, the whole crowd's going to be against you if you play Furious. You better get used to people hating on you, basically. Sadly, as we talked about with the fucking comments thing, that's like part and parcel of being in CS. And then lastly, this is where the recency bias does go too crazy. Right, I can do it two ways. I'll do the whole year quickly. So they won Kanavitsa, a prestige event. They won Blast at the end of the season. They came second at Dacia, but actually that had decent teams, even though it's a smaller land. They came top four at IEM Dallas, and then they came top eight at the Major, top eight at EWC. This is like, that's like a bad tournament's quarterfinals for them. By the way, not only would that make you like now number two in the world, that's probably so far. If Navi gets to be number one team of the year, they're number two team of the year. That's better than Vitality. That's better than Fades. That's better than Mount. That's better than everyone. But we're already mm -hmm. saying, this lineup can't win. Pull the plug. It's like, if anything, this is the outline. This is the one tournament where they couldn't play. So then there's that aspect. And then even if you do the most recent thing, let's just do the last three months. So the last three months would be second at Dacha, top four at Dallas, um, one blast, top eight at uh, EWC, and then now this fail here. That's not even that bad. Again, if you did like the last three months... Wouldn't that still get you top five in the world, basically? Like, these, are, these aren't the bad results people think. I think people are doing that thing where they're just going too far. It's like you're looking at this one result and thinking every loss was like that. They weren't. Often the losses were close or three maps. Like, even Donk. This is how you... It's why, you know, in the past episodes, people thought it was Corp Maui. When I used to say as a good point, like, if this is the worst Donk can look, he is, like, going to be the GOAT. Bro, this was the worst he's ever played by far. Yeah. The other ones were, like, he just had a mild off game. Like, the joke is he really could do, like, a, I think they... Wasn't it said on Twitter, his worst actual rating was a one. 0.05. Bro, if that's your flaw, 
you know that's what people legends like Magus do like on average tournaments like yeah. and we're saying they're really good so I, I I personally don't have panic stations My, but I'll spin into one of the things then I want you two to give your thoughts here's the reason why though it would make sense if they were going to do a roster move because one the other thing that's unfair about the Zontix down Kangal is they're pure rookies they are pure rookies in their first year. And we're not just saying like a normal rookie, you know, your whole team gets knocked out in the group stage. You didn't do that well, but no one watches you. You're always in the playoffs playing Vitality and G2 and fucking all the best teams in the world. And then you fail. Like The reason why I think they might have a little bit of trouble is this. Because right now, there's so many other teams that aren't good that are Russian. VP looks terrible right now. I bet we'd love to have electronic. You know what I mean? There's players that we might want. Cloud9's made that new roster and Perfecto's on the bench and some of their players. Right now, there's just too much talent in that scene. I feel like all of them should shuffle eventually. Like, if VP doesn't keep up there, I didn't put it in this one. I could have done VP as a bad point. They should probably break that team up. You're keeping, like, two or three players there that should probably go elsewhere and be amazing. Like, that is a team with, like, four HLTV top 40, 20 players, and so far, zero are going to make it this year. So, I, I do think... What do you think on that one? Like, I, here's the thing. I personally... If I had to, I don't think you have to make a player change. But if there's that much talent out there, I think it's not it's totally plausible they might. And if the right player's there, maybe you do it. What do you think? I, I think it's uh, way too early to start about like talking about player change. I think like as you said, they have they brought in two young guns, you know, and you need to give them time like uh, to get the experience to develop and it's not like they've been bad you know they <laughs> rank number two in the world so and to have like uh, two uh, rookies and playing at this level like i mean give them some time and yeah. i think for some things i think some things is good i think for me it's kind of like what maui said it's more i think it's more his mentality and it can be tough to like go out like uh, win katovic and have this pressure from the start you know and then try to live up to your first tournament and all this, uh, everyone is just looking and waiting for you to fail. So it's going to be a tough. But if he can go through that and come stronger out the other side, then I think he, he can be a really good like uh, support development for the like spirits. That uh, you have like Shira and Donk as uh, big stars, and then you have the the other elements around them. And uh, I think he could be valuable if he can go over that hump. To see more cool, funny, interesting clips based on topics from my content, well, subscribe to this channel then, or, you know, be a pleb and don't.